Now GFI outlet, as great as it is, has one annoying flaw, and that is they're very fragile and they get damaged easily. If you've had a really powerful thunderstorm and lightning strikes in the area, or maybe the utility has some voltage irregularities, it's not uncommon to find that a GFCI device all of a sudden isn't working properly. And so in that case, they need to be replaced. Now, how do you know your GFI isn't working? I have here a plug tester, which I'm sure I've seen, but it has integrated in it a GFI test button on the top, the little red button. So I'm gonna plug into this particular GFI. The two lights go on, which tells us that the plug works. You could use it as a plug, but how do I know it'll trip off when it's supposed to? That's what the little button for is on top. And when I push that, something should be happening. That button simulates a ground fault and should pop the GFI out and shut it down. And since that's not happening right now, that tells me that this GFI is sort of toast and we need to get rid of it. I have taken the plug out of the wall and before we shut power off, I wanna show you one other thing. This is a different kind of tester. It's called a proximity tester. I have on me all the time. This one's pretty beat up because I use it nearly every day. And what this does is verify that we actually have power on the wire. So when you turn it on and I put this thing onto a wire that's energized, you see that red light comes on and it starts chirping at me. So that's just a second way of testing that there's actually power available and it's also a good way of finding out if power is not available. So that's called a proximity tester. It's a good thing to have. Next thing to do is before we touch anything, I wanna go downstairs and shut this circuit off at the panel. There's no reason to be doing this live. I don't want you to either. Okay, I have turned off the breaker and I'm gonna check it again with this proximity tester. And uh, I got no tone, which means it's, it's good and dead. Before we start taking wires off, I wanna point out something that's gonna be really important. You'll notice there are two sets of wires on this GFI. There's two blacks, there's two whites. And not all of them will have that. Sometimes there's only one set coming in. But when there's two sets like that and they're distributed top and bottom, it's wired and hooked up in a very specific way. And it's very important to put it back on the new outlet exactly like it came off. Because if not, it won't work right. If you look carefully on the back of your new GFI, there's two words that are important, line, and load. They're separated top to bottom, so there's going to be two terminals on the top that are labeled line. One of them gets a black and one of them gets a white, and then on the, on the other end of it, either top or bottom, it'll be load. One gets a black, one gets a white. Those need to be hooked up exactly the same way, as I say, or else you'll have problems. So once I take these wires apart, how do I know which is which? A simple little hack here with some white tape, I'm gonna identify one set of wires. And in this case, I am going to just uh, arbitrarily decide to identify the line set, which in this case is on the bottom of my GFI. It might not be the bottom of your GFI, so look at the words. It's printed right on the back. So here it says line, so I'm gonna take a piece of white tape and put it on the white line and another piece of white tape put it on the black line and now I can take this all apart and not worry about screwing it up. So let's do that real quick. Got the device taken off the GFI and I've got the wires separated so that the two uh, wires with the white tape are on the left the other two are on the right just so that I don't you know get them mixed up. Now on the new GFI if I look carefully the lines are the top two terminals and the loads are the bottom. Look carefully, it's very easy to mess these things up. Let's get this hooked back. I'll start with the lines. Now it matters left and right as well as top and bottom. Brass gets the black wire, white gets the white wire. So when you're done, there should be a black and a black on one side and two whites on the other side. So do take your time, there's no race here. <laughs> Another thing that is important is make sure that when you tighten these things down, you really tighten them down. These screws will fool you sometimes and you think, you're, you, think you got a good grip on it 
only to have them pop out later. So I like to use a flathead screwdriver to get in that straight groove and really crank down on that thing so that you know. And then when you do have it on there and you think you're done, pull it, pull on it real hard. Make sure it doesn't come out. All right, I've got the lines hooked up. Let's do the loads. Now I've got the loads hooked up. The only thing left is the ground. There should be a single bare copper conductor in your box. That just goes to that green ground terminal on the bottom. Don't, don't forget that. That's important. Matter of fact, your GFI won't work right without it. Very good. Got the lines hooked up, got the loads hooked up, got the ground hooked up, and we're ready to put this thing back in the wall. Boiler alert. The reason you have line and load is because this device is not only protecting itself, but devices downstream. And I'm going to show you when we're done how that works. If you're in a kitchen, that is, that is probably uh, the case because there's multiple plugs. And when I'm putting the outlet back in there, I like to take a needle nose pliers and use it to sort of train the wires back in there. Again, if you're working in a kitchen, you're probably dealing with 12 gauge wire and this stuff can be really hard to work with. And so you have to be a little patient. You want to fold those wires back in there instead of fighting them. Kind of put a bend in them so that they naturally want to go in the box and also keep a close eye on that bare copper wire because if that gets you know in the wrong place it could make contact with one of these terminals and it'll cause you trouble <laughs> now we can turn the power back on the only thing left to do is get our plug tester back out and check it out so i plug it in and we've got the same lights on as before but this time when i hit the button look what happens it pops that reset button out or test button, I should say, and kills the whole GFI. Not only does it kill this one, it kills anything else on the circuit that is downstream of that outlet. So I can prove that by plugging my same plug tester in, hitting the button, and it trips the GFI that controls it. Isn't that great? So any amount of outlets that happen to be downstream of that GFI will act the same way when the GFI is functioning properly. That's pretty cool. The next time you have a power outage in your house and you're thinking about calling an electrician and spending hundreds of dollars to have them come out, do this first. Take one of these, it costs you about 10 bucks, and make sure that all your GFIs are reset and are working. You'd be surprised how many times that's all it is, is you got to pop a reset a button and you can do this yourself. So go for it. Thanks for watching.